Good morning and good, good afternoon, attendees. Welcome to the sixth episode in the webinar series, How to Trade the Financial Markets. I'm Nikhil Malhotra, and on behalf of GTC, I'm going to present the series, the next uh, episode in the series, webinar series, the sixth one. And today the topic is Technical Indicators Part 1. In my previous uh, webinar, I've explained about the candlestick, various patterns on, of the candlesticks and how do we do our technical analysis. So now let's proceed with the technical indicators. And in today's webinar, I'll be teaching you one trading strategy, a very simple trading strategy based on the indicators. First of all, I would like to remind all the attendees that we have a special offer. If we are going to open a new Forex trading account by using the link given in the chat box, then you have the benefit of preloaded $100 in your trading account. GTC provides 100% bonus on the first deposit. So the minimum deposit amount required is $200. So if you start your trading account with $200, $200 would be added as the 100% bonus, plus you'll be getting $100 extra preloaded in your trading account. So the link is provided in the chat box. Click on the link and sign up using the link during the webinar. This offer is valid only till the end of this webinar. So let's proceed with today's topic, technical indicators. Now, in today's webinar, I'll be talking about introduction to technical indicators, types, different types of technical indicators, then what are momentum indicators, knowing moving averages, and how to apply moving averages in combination with RSI. RSI is relative strength index and my trading strategy would be based on the combination of moving averages and rsi now what are technical indicators technical indicators are basically uh, they are represented on the chart okay they are graphical representations on the chart and they uh, we achieve the technical indicators on the system by default, like we have the various options to add technical indicators on the chart. And on the back end, the system is doing some mathematical calculations. We have different formulas. Through different formulas, we achieve different indicators. Now, I'm not here to teach you the mathematical formulas. Our objective here is to understand various types of technical indicators. Indicators basically makes our job easier to identify the trends in the market. Because as a trader, we are always looking for the trend, which side the market is going to. So if the market is bullish, we should identify the bullish trend and make a buy trade to make uh, profit in the trades. Okay. So this is the opportunity as a trader, what we are looking for. And secondly, if the market is bearish, the indicators should hint. If the market is going bearish, then we would not buy. We would make a sell trade and make some quick profits. But to be very honest, these indicators, they are lagging in nature. Okay, now what do I mean by lagging? Now, mainly all the indicators, okay, the main component of the calculation of the indicators is the price itself, the fluctuation in the price. So once the price is fluctuating, either the price is going up or going down, along with the price fluctuation, the indicators, they take into consideration the volume in the price, means how many, buyers or sellers are taking up these trades and in which quantity so not only the number of buyers see number of buyers is not all that important but the quantity is important okay if we have huge buying orders in the market irrespective of the number of buyers there could be one huge buying order uh, placed by one institutional uh, buyer okay so now the number of buyer is just one but he has placed a uh, a uh, huge order okay then obviously the market will be turning bullish because now we have huge volume towards the buy direction in the market so these indicators they do their job at the back end the algorithm is designed in a such a way you just uh, choose the indicator and it would appear on the chart okay we don't have to go into calculations so uh, i'm not going to teach you the calculations i'm just going to explain various types of indicators, how we can use them and how to benefit from them. Now, mainly we have two, type of, two types of indicators which are available to the traders. 
the first one is known as oscillators and the second type is overlay now what are oscillators and what are overlay indicators mainly oscillator would appear on a window other than the price so when we are plotting a chart okay let's say we have some candles on the top and the candles are here okay i'm just plotting some candles the chart would look like this so these are the candles so oscillator will be uh, you'll find oscillator window below the main candles so they are not overlaid on the price candles itself the chart could be a line chart could be a candlestick chart mainly we use candlestick chart for the analysis so when we look for an oscillator indicator okay we just go to the indicator section and we select our type of indicator we need to apply to the charts so a different window a second window would appear just below the candlesticks and this window the second window it has a boundary it has an upper boundary and it has a lower boundary and all the oscillators all oscillating indicators they just keep on moving within the boundary so they will just move from lower boundary to upper boundary from upper to lower so like this okay they just can't move beyond the boundaries they can't go beyond the upper boundary or they can't go further down to the lower boundary so that's a reason they keep on oscillating between the highest point and the lowest point and different types of oscillators are available different types of oscillating indicators are available there are tons of indicators available okay but i'll be explaining a few of them in today's webinar the most widely used is rsi which is known as relative strength index second common type of oscillating indicator second uh, most common oscillating indicator is CCI, stochastic, MACD. So these are some of the very common ones which are widely used. Now, uh, any idea uh, why uh, they are just known as oscillators? I, I've like I've explained it right now. But can you give me the answer why they are known as oscillators? They have momentum. Okay. See, they are known as oscillators because they are oscillating between a fixed boundary. Have you ever heard of uh, oscillation like the pendulum of the clock? The clock pendulum is always oscillating left and right. It can't go round 360 degrees. Okay. It can't go full circle. They go to a certain extent, then they swing back to the right and they have a boundary. Uh, when they reach the right side of the boundary, they just swing back to the left. So they're oscillating left and right. So that's also an oscillator. Now, when I'm talking about the oscillating indicators on the chart, they are not swinging left and right. In fact, they are swinging up and down. They swing between the upper boundary of the oscillating indicator and the lower boundary. Okay. So this, I've just plotted a few. Uh, uh, candlesticks and an uh, oscillating window on the screen to give you an idea. And overlay indicators, as the name says, they are overlaid on the candlesticks itself. So we have candles and we'll be having uh, indicators which will be like plotted on the candlesticks. Okay. The, the indicators would be appearing on the candlesticks or around candlesticks. So they will be overlaid on the price action itself so a second window we have oscillating indicators on the same window the candlesticks we have overlay indicators so these are the two main types of indicators which we use while our trading analysis the technical analysis okay now oscillators are also known as momentum indicators see whenever we're checking the strength of the market whenever we're checking the direction of the market first and foremost we look for the direction of the market number one whether the market is going up or the market is going down but as a trader i should also notice the strength of the market the strength in the trend let's say i'm going to buy uh, in a bullish market okay but it's been quite a while 
that the market has been bullish. And now uh, there could be a scenario, the bull trend, the bullish trend is now on the verge of ending up. Okay, so what if I join the bulls or I just get into a buy trade at a very later stage when there is no momentum, when the market is, the bullish momentum is fading out. So whenever the market is approaching in any particular direction and it's approaching with huge volume, means more and more buyers are joining in, uh, in the same direction, then the market trend is with full force, with full momentum. So we check the momentum of the market with these oscillators. Okay, If the momentum is strong, means the volume is strong, then the trend would continue. But if the momentum is weakening down, the volume is going down, the trend and the trend could be still up, but the momentum is fading out. Okay, then a reversal might happen very, very soon. So that's the reason, apart from the direction, we should always look at the momentum of the market. And to judge the momentum of the market, we take use, uh, we take help from oscillators. We use oscillating indicators. Okay. All right. Now, here is the example of first oscillating indicator. It is called stochastic. So in stochastic, now we have a window which is appearing uh, the downside of the candles. Okay. And we have a upper boundary of the stochastic which is marked by the red dotted line. And we have a lower boundary of the stochastic here which is marked by the green dotted line. Now these upper, uh, the dotted lines are not the extreme boundaries. Okay. These are the boundaries which are uh, a little prior to the extreme boundaries, means the last border. Okay. So these are like inner boundaries. So whenever the indicator, the lines, now the stochastic is represented through lines here. Or whenever the stochastic lines, they reach the first inner boundary. On the top, we call, uh, we say the market is in a overbought condition. Okay. Now, when the market is in an overbought condition, it may uh, take a U turn. On the other side, whenever the lines, the stochastic lines, they reach the lower boundary, the dotted line, which is the inner boundary. Okay. We say the market has reached in the state of oversold. So there could be some distance that market could travel furthermore. The, uh, usually the values of a stochastic is ranging from 0 to 100 and 50 is the middle line. Okay. It can't go deeper than 0. It can't go into negative, uh, negative territory. It can't go beyond 100. So we can mark the inner boundary somewhere around 80, the higher one. So from 80 to 100, the top zone. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's have a quick uh, illustration here. So let's say this is the boundary. This is the stochastic boundary. Okay, so what we will do, we will mark uh, inner boundary on the top, which could be here. And we can mark a lower inner boundary here. So now, whenever the stochastic line, it touches the upper boundary, means around 75 or 80, whatever the number we have selected, we may say the market has already reached in the overbought uh, situation. Okay. And now it can't go further than the 100. So 100 is the last extreme. So it may touch anywhere between the overbought zone. This is the zone of uh, overbought. Okay, and it may start going downwards. So when it reaches around uh, 20, so from 20 to 100, uh, to, sorry, 20 to zero, we have the zone of oversold condition. So on the top, we can have a boundary which says it's a zone of overbought condition. On the downside, we can have a lower boundary which says it's a zone of oversold condition. Okay, now what is market? A market is a place where buyers and sellers are present. Okay, it's a mechanism where some people are buying any product and few people are selling any product. So the buyers and sellers, the goods, they, uh, they exchange hands between the buyers and the sellers. Now, what happens if in a marketplace, everyone turns into a buyer? Now, everyone starts buying and everyone turns into a buyer, then who, uh, from whom would they buy? Who would sell to them? There, there will be no seller left in the market. The mechanism of the market will fail in itself. The equilibrium, uh, the equilibrium of the market would be disturbed because now everyone is buying. Okay. So what happens 
when we have more buying orders, when we have huge buying orders and the momentum continues for a while, so everyone turns buyer. So most of the traders, they turn buyer. And the market reaches into an overbought territory. Now, it is the time that we should not get into a buying trade. It's a warning uh, to a trader that you should not buy because the market uh, has the market equilibrium is already disturbed. We have majority of buyers. So what will happen? Very soon, a reversal will happen. The early buyers who got into the trade, okay, they will start booking their profit because now they are getting a very good price of the product. The market has gone up. Okay, so they will start uh, selling the instrument, the product, the online product here. Okay, the currencies here or the commodities here. Then gradually, some other buyers, they will also start selling. So gradually, the market will turn around. The market will turn from a, a, from a buyer's market to a seller's market. And very soon, the market will reach in the state of oversold. So this is how we take clue from the oscillators, from the momentum indicators. So whenever they reach to the upper boundary, okay, the upper zone, we say it is overbought and we should not buy at that time. And whenever they reach to the lower zone, the lower boundary, we say it is oversold and it is not advisable to sell at that particular Just going to clear this here. Yeah. Okay. Now we have talked about the oscillators. I've just explained one type of oscillating indicator. Now let's talk about the overlays. Now we have different types of overlay indicators, like again, hundreds of overlay indicators available to us. Okay. But the most commonly used overlay indicators are moving averages and Bollinger band. I think. I've not found any trader who has not used moving averages in his technical analysis. Moving averages are the most commonly used overlay indicators. Now, what is moving average? Why they use moving average? Any idea? Have you ever used moving averages in your technical analysis? Or can you explain why we should use moving averages? Okay, to explain the concept of moving averages, I'll just uh, quote one example, okay? Let's say I recently moved to UAE, to Dubai, from any other country, okay? I'm a new resident here, and I'm looking for a house on rent. So what I'll do, I'll just check the property portals, okay? Different real estate portals. I'll go to some local property agents, and I'll start inquiring about the rental prices in a particular locality. So just for the sake of an example, uh, let's say I want, I'm looking for a two bedroom apartment in Marine. And I have no idea because I've not been residing here. So I have no idea what are the rentals. So what I'll do, I'll check the prices from various different brokers and property portals and I'll note down the uh, rentals. I'll prepare my list. I'll start comparing. Let's say after doing my anal analysis, after collecting all the data, I reached to a conclusion that the average market rental in that particular locality is 75,000 dirhams. Now, if any landlord is asking higher than 75,000 dirhams, I'll just come to know, oh, he's charging extra. He's demanding extra. Okay. So he's exorbitant. I should, I should not take a house on rent from this particular landlord. And I've, I've compared the prices through market average. I've, I've collected the sample. Maybe I've taken the uh, information from various brokers, uh, let's say 10 brokers. So my sample size is 10 here. So I've collected the average price from 10 brokers and I've reached to a conclusion. Similarly, when the candles, the price candles on the chart, okay, they are currently higher than the average line, moving average line. It means they are expensive than the average price. So market is in the bullish momentum trend bullish territory okay so this is how we make our conclusion so if we plot a moving average line on the charts and we find the current price means the recent candles they are on the top they are above the moving average line means they are expensive they are uh, they are higher so the market is in a bullish trend on the other side if the candles we find the candles, they are lower than the moving average line, means we do not have demand. 
the average price is higher, but the current price is lower than that. So the market is in not a bullish condition, it's in a bearish condition. So this is how a moving average line will help us to identify the direction of the market, the trend in the market. Okay, now I've just taken the example uh, from the real estate agents and I've collected data from 10 of them. Now on the moving line, I can collect data from last 10 candles. So if I collect data from last 10 candles and I plot a moving line on the charts, so it will be called MA10 because the average is being calculated on the basis of last 10 candles. Okay, now if I go to 20 property agents and I collect data from 20 of them, then my average value, like 75,000 rental value, is derived from the collection size, the sample size of 20. Similarly, if I want to check the market average price on the basis of last 20 candles, so it will be called MA20. And the value, the probability would be much higher. The, the, the information gathered from 20 candles would be much more reliable. Okay, so higher the number of sample size, higher the number of MA line would be. So if we want to collect data from 50 candles, the average line, then it would be MA50. Okay, so these are various numbers which are associated with moving averages. So this is how we calculate. So what happens? See here. So these are the various numbers 50, 200, 20. So what's this line is saying the top one. This is MA200. So the line is derived on the basis of the sample of 200 candles. So the system is calculating the average price from the rightmost, means the recent most, and it's taking backward calculation of latest 200 candles. So what happens whenever a new candle is printed? The system takes into calculation the latest 200 candle and it deletes the first one. So with each new candle being printed on the chart, the new line is also printed. The line is also extended. That's the reason we call it a moving average because it keeps on moving along with the candles. It's not like only one time exercise. So it's it's being done on a continuous basis. It's, it's dynamic. So how, whenever the candles are changing, whenever the candles are being printed, the moving lines are also being calibrated are also being uh, printed with the latest calculation. Okay, so that's the reason we get a continuous line along with the candles. So see, the top one is 200. Here, the middle one. The middle one is this one, the black arrow. The middle one is MA50. So the middle one is calculated on the basis of the last 50 candles. And the lower one is this one is MA20. So it's being calculated on the basis of latest 20 candles. So 20, 50, 200, 145, you can give any number to the system and it will calculate on the basis of those number of candles and print a line on the charts. It will be overlaid on the charts along with the candles. Okay, so that's the reason a moving average is a overlay type of indicator. All right, now we have two types of moving averages. The moving average line can be calculated on the basis of two different types of calculation. Number one is very, very simple. It's a simple moving average. You just take the sum total of the number of candles you want to take into consideration. Let's say 10 candles, so it will be SMA10. So it will be called SMA10 and the system will calculate the average price on the basis of 10 candles. Okay, the sum total of 10 candles divided by number 10. But if you want to check the average of 200, so you will give the command SMA200. So the system will take the total of 200 candles, the latest 200 candles, divide by 200, and it will give the number on the basis of 200 candles. Okay, simple average formula. Now, what happens when we give EMA command? EMA means exponential moving average. The major difference between the simple moving average and exponential moving average is in the exponential form of analysis calculation. The system pays higher weightage to the recent most candles. So in our school days, we used to learn about 
various methods of calculating averages. So there used to be a simple average calculation and there used to be a weighted average calculation. Okay. So now in the exponential more weightage, EMA, more weightage is being paid to the recent most candles. So when a trader is plotting a EMA line versus SMA line, the EMA line would be more reactive. Okay. What do I mean by reactive? Uh, it will show uh, sharp turns in the uh, because it's taking into consideration the recent most price action. Okay, so I'll just give you an example the difference between EMA and SMA. Let's say this black line is SMA, it's moving like this. All right, so just by looking at this black line, I can know the market is turning to the bullish direction because the line is going upwards. The line is going upwards. Now, at the same time, let's say this is SMA 20. Okay, for the sake of an example, we say this is SMA 20. At the same time, with the same number of candles, with the same uh, price action. Okay, I'm not changing anything. I'm just being on the same chart. If I plot EMA 20, it will take average from the latest 20 candles, but it will pay more weightage to the recent candles. So the EMA 20 line would look like this. So it will be a sharper U-turn and it will react faster. So that's the reason we say EMAs react faster on the chart. They print uh, more uh, sharper turns on the chart. Okay. So as a short-term trader, as a short-term trader, we always uh, pay like we always uh, have preference towards EMA because EMA gives us better value. EMA gives us better presentation. EMA reacts faster. As a mid to long term trader, we usually use SMEs. All right. So now, uh, as a trader, we should also know which number of moving average line we should adopt in our analysis. Means we, uh, either we should go for SMA 10, SMA 20, SMA 50, or EMA 10, EMA 20, EMA 50. Which moving average is beneficial? Okay. So what happens? Okay, now this is ju just an example that apart from giving the direction of the market, the average lines, they also react, they also act as the dynamic support or resistance. Now, when the market is trending down here, yeah, the market is moving down and all the candles, they are printed lower than the moving average line, this blue one. And this blue line is SMA20. Okay, and all the candles are lower means the market is bearish. So whenever the market will take a bounce, it will just find the resistance at the SMA line. Again, it came down, it just bounced up, it found resistance at the SMA level. Again down, again up, it found resistance. So SMA lines, EMA lines, the moving average lines, basically, they also act as dynamic levels of support and resistance. If the market means the candles are below the moving average line will act as resistance if the candles are higher than the moving average line then on each fall they will act as support to the market okay so these are some example on the charts so exponential moving moving average reacts faster than the simple moving average that's what i've explained to my lines which i've drawn on the uh, chat two minutes ago. Okay, now which are the best moving average period? Means which number, which moving average line we should plot on our charts to have a better view, to have a better analysis of the market. Now it all depends whether you want to be a long term trader or you want to be a short term trader. Okay, now basically, if you are an intraday type trader, means you are a short term trader, you're just you are opening your trades on day to day basis you don't want to carry forward your trades to the next day you don't you don't want to hold your trades overnight you want to get in and get out in the same day okay or you are a scalper you want to take profit with the uh, every sharp turn in the market very you want to get in very quickly and get out very quickly then you should pay attention to the following moving average and these are more suitable than the higher moving averages so you should always plot EMA 10. You can also look for EMA 20. 
or EMA 50 on the charts. Okay, so these are the most suitable types, suitable numbers for a short term trader. Now, if you want to be a swing trader, means you want to be a long term trader or a mid term trader because a swing trader usually gets in at the swing, means at the lower end, and, he won't, and if the market is going up, he will get in to the trades when the market turned bullish. And he will ride the full trend until he finds a high in the market, a long term high in the market. Okay, so he's uh, he's taking benefit from the swing low to the swing high, and vice versa. If he if you are shorting any market, he will get into the market at the top. So he will get into the trades at the swing high, and he will ride the full trend, and he will ride the trend to the swing low. So he remains into the trade for a very longer period than a intraday type of trader. So for the longer term traders or the mid term traders, the most suitable type of moving averages are MA50, MA100 and MA200. Okay, so these are the general classifications based on which type of trader you are. It all depends on the, on your, on the trader's time perspective. Okay, for how long you want to hold the trades. Okay, now it's a very, very interesting scenario. I'm just going to talk about bullish crosses and bearish crosses. I would just like to remind you guys, we have a special offer for all the attendees. If you want to open your new trading account, just during the webinar, we have given a link in the chat box. Okay, you can click on the link and you have a special benefit. Apart from the 100% bonus on your first deposit, you would also get USD hundred hundred dollars preloaded in your trading account. So once you will deposit two hundred dollars, which is the minimum required amount, you will get two hundred dollars as bonus plus hundred dollars preloaded in your trading account. And this offer is only if you sign up during the webinar. Also, we have the second link for the IBs. So IBs, I'm going to explain the benefits for the IBs in a short while. So let's continue with the trading strategies. The different types of indicators. Now, here I'm talking about the crosses of the moving averages. So, whenever we have a lower number moving average, means let's say I'm I am talking here about EMA 10 and in combination with EMA 20. Here we are comparing the two EMAs, number 10 and number 20. Okay. So, whenever EMA 10 crosses EMA 20 to the upside. The market is called bullish and this cross is known as bullish cross or a golden cross. Okay, now why so? Again, I'm going back to my real estate example. I've checked the real estate prices and on the comparison on the average, I found the average market price in the particular locality I was talking about is 75,000 dirhams. Now, I'll ask the broker, what is the price today? I've checked the compare. I've checked the comp uh, average prices. I've made my comparison. Now, if today, if all the brokers they are saying now the price has gone up to eighty thousand, means the current market price is eighty thousand, and the price around three months back was seventy five thousand, means the market is going higher. So the current market price means the latest data from the real estate agents. We can term it as EMA ten because that's the latest okay and number one uh, it's being the latest number two i've just collected from the sample size of 10 10 brokers vis a vis if i go and collect the data from 20 brokers and i do a comparison and let's say the average price is coming 75000 on the basis of 20 brokers but the average price is coming 80000 on the basis of 10 brokers so EMA 10 is now higher than EMA 20. The number of EMA 10, the market value of EMA 10 is now higher than the market value of EMA 20. Means uh, the market is getting bullish. The price is going higher. We have more demand in the market. So this is called the situation of bullish cross over or a golden cross. Whereas on the other side, if I talk about a bearish condition, in that case, the sample size of 10 means EMA 10 would 
have a lower number means the value. Now, if I collect data from the 10 brokers, okay, I will call it EMA 10, and they say now the market price is 70,000, but the sample size of 20, these 20 brokers, they're giving me the average price of 75,000, and the 10 is giving me only 70,000, means the number is getting lower. So the value of EMA 10 is going below than the value of EMA 20. So the market is getting cheaper. So the condition is now bearish. Okay. So whenever we have a bearish cross in the market, the market starts falling down. Like we have a second name called the bullish cross, which is called golden cross. We also have a second name of the bearish cross, which is called a death cross. Okay. So whenever we have a bullish cross, it's a golden time to buy. Whenever we have a death cross, we should not buy. We should get into a sell trade because the market is coming down, dying down. Okay, so these are the two conditions which we can uh, get to know with the help of moving average crossovers. So these are very very commonly used techniques. But keep in mind, these techniques are only good when the market is in a trend. If the market is trending higher means if the market is going up, if the market is going up, sorry, if the market is going up, trending, then the EMA lines will give you a very good value or they will give you a very good trading condition. But if the market is not trending, Otherwise, if the market is coming down, then also the EMAs will give you a very good indication. But the market is not trending. We are not getting higher highs or higher lows or lower highs or lower lows. The market is flat, sideways, range bound, like this. If the market is just moving in a consolidating in a very tight range, just falling within the same boundaries, then the EMA crossover is not going to help you. Why? Because most of the EMA lines, they are being printed after the candle is printed. So they are lagging in nature. They cannot tell you in advance. So no indicator can tell you in advance what is going to happen. All indicators, they are lagging indicators. They are calculated on the basis of the price action. So price action takes place first, then the indicator will come. Because then only the system can calculate the value of the candles the closing price and the opening price and various techniques, okay? So whenever the market is trending, the indicators will give you a very good result. But whenever the market is sideways, only price action can help you with the good results in the trade. So as a beginner, we can take help with, uh, from the indicators. We can have our, our strategies on the basis of the indicators and do not make it a complex strategy. Do not uh, plot hundreds of indicators on your screen. Okay, do not overdo it. Do not complicate it. Keep it simple. Use only one or two indicators. Just take confirmation from only one or two indicators. For example, if I'm talking about the momentum indicators or the oscillators, do not plot like five oscillators in one window, on one chart. It doesn't make any sense. Only one is good enough. So all oscillators, they are doing the same thing. Only there is a, a bit of tweaking between the calculation, okay? So do not make it complicated, keep it simple, use less of indicators, and now we will discuss the strategy on the basis of these two indicators. That's the cross of moving averages, the moving lines, along with RSI. RSI indicator. The RSI, as the name says, relative strength index. Now, I've explained you earlier, all these oscillators, okay, they actually tell the power of the market, the power in the trend, the momentum in the trend, because they take into calculation, they take into consideration the volume behind each guy. Okay, so let's say if we have many buyers, they're, they're putting big volume, they're putting huge money into any product, let's say gold. So if gold candles are bullish, and we also find a uh, huge volume, big orders behind each candle. The system will take into consideration all the uh, higher prices of the gold with each candle along with the volume. 
and they will paint a line. And we will have a strong RSI means the RSI value will be going up. Okay, a stronger RSI means now the market is turning bullish and it's going up with full momentum. On the other hand, if we'll have a lesser volume, okay, or the volume towards the bearish market would be increasing, the RSI value will start going down. So from overbought, it will come into oversold area. Vice versa, from oversold means from the bottom, it will go into the upper region, the overbought uh, region. So this is how the RSI will explain the situation in the market, whether the market is bullish or bearish, number one, or whether the market is bullish or bearish with volume or without volume, with momentum or without momentum. So let's have a look on the charts. So this is how the RSI looks on the chart. We have candles on the top and we have an oscillating window with RSI at the bottom. Okay. And the top line is usually set at 70. The extreme value, the highest value, the RSI can ever reach is 100. The lowest value the RSI can ever have is zero. So we'll have zero here at the bottom. We'll have zero here and we'll have 100 here on the top. And it will be fluctuating between zero and 100, but we'll not wait for zero and 100. We'll mark an inner boundary. So the top inner boundary is usually set at 70 for RSI and the lower inner boundary, which is blue in color highlighted here, it's usually set at 30. And we have a mid boundary. We have a mid level, which is 50 because the middle level of zero and 100 is 50. So whenever RSI line, it touches 70 or it reaches 70 to 100, this area, which is 70 to 100, this area is 70 to 100. And the area on the bottom is 30 to 0. 30 to 0. So whenever RSI line, it reaches between 70 to 100, we say the market is in overbought condition. Vice versa, whenever RSI line drops to 30 to 0, we say the market is in oversold condition. Okay, so this is how we use RSI and we will not buy whenever the market is already overbought. Now it's time for the change and we will not sell whenever the market is already oversold because now again, it's time for the trend change. Here, now in this slide, it shows the example of oversold condition because the RSI has reached the oversold value. Okay, the bottom line, it is touching the blue line to the downside. Okay, now I'm going to explain the concept of 50 in RSI. 50 is the middle line of the RSI window, the oscillating window. And usually what happens in an RSI window, when I'm going to draw a midline, It's really tough to break through the mid level because it will act as a resistance. So market will touch 50, it may come down, it may again go back up, it may come down. And then when the momentum is full, means we have so many buyers taking the control of the buying market, bullish market, then the RSI line will break above the mid line, which is 50. And on the other side, if the market is dropping again, it may come to 50, it may bounce up, again it may come to 50 because 50 is now acting as support for RSI line, okay? And But when the momentum is ultra bearish, we have huge orders filling in the uh, selling condition, the sell orders, huge volume, okay? The RSI will drop and it will pierce through the mid area, which is 50. So crossing 50 can be considered the gain uh, of the, uh, market conditions. If the market is going bullish, we can say whenever the RSI line breaches 50 level, it, it crosses above 50 level, the bulls, they have, con uh, they have gained full control. The bulls have come back with full momentum in the market. On the other side, whenever the RSI line is dropping and it is piercing through the level of 50, okay, and it's going uh, to the lower region, we say the bears, they have come back in the market with full force. We have huge bearish momentum in the market. 
Okay, so we can make use of this technique along with moving averages, and we can combine both the techniques: the crossing of RSI 50 level and the bearish cross and the bullish cross, and we have a, our uh, we will have our own trading strategy. Okay, so now I'm going to explain the trading strategy. Number one, we will look for a cross on the moving averages. So here we can have a cross between any number, any combination, a moving average 10, crossing moving average 20, a moving average 5, crossing move, moving average 10. We can have 20 crossing 50, we can have 50 crossing 100, whatever means there would be a lower number moving average and there would be a higher number moving average. We just want to check whenever a lower number moving average is reacting and crossing above the higher number moving average, then the market is bullish. And whenever a higher, whenever a lower number moving average is crossing down a higher number moving average means a 10 crossing 20 crossing to the downside or a 20 crossing 50 or a 50 crossing 100, the market gets bearish. Now for this uh, strategy, we'll be using EMA 10 with EMA 20. Okay, we will not bid for 50 and 100 or 20 or 50. We will just get into the market, the buying order or the sell order on the basis of EMA 10 and EMA 20. So we'll just look for the bullish cross or bearish cross of the MAs. So if EMA 10 crosses to the downside of EMA 20, it is a bearish cross. And if EMA 10 crosses to the upside, of EMA 20, it is a bullish cross. Then second condition we should look for the RSI line. If it is a bullish cross, means we have a bullish setup on the charts. Okay, a bullish cross have a bullish setup on the charts. Now we'll look for RSI line should cross above the middle level, which is 50. Now, if it crosses above 50, means the market is ultra bullish. The bullish orders they are filling in market very very fast. We have huge momentum towards the upside. So it makes sense to buy. So we will buy on the RSI crossing the mid level. The candle, the candle when RSI crosses above the 50, that candle would be the entry candle. Okay. And if we buy, we'll put our stop loss two levels lower. I'm just going to switch to trading view charts to explain the strategy in a much better way. So what we'll do, if we buy on the basis of RSI crossing 50, we will place our stop loss two levels below. Because whenever we are buying, uh, we are worried if the market goes down, we'll be in losses. So we should always protect our risk to stop loss. And then we are going to calculate the distance between the entry and stop loss. Let's say this is my entry price here. And this is my stop loss price, lower than my entry price. So I'm going to calculate the distance means I will calculate the number of pips, how many pips I'm going to lose. So that's my risk one. I'm going to multiply this number with 1.5 because if I'm taking, let's say just for an example, if I'm taking 100 pips risk, I'll target for at least one and a half times, means I want to make profit of 150 pips. So this is the risk and reward, which I've already talked in my previous webinars. So I will not take a trade with the same amount of risk. I want to take a trade with the higher amount of reward. So if my risk is 100, I would take the trade with a probability of 150 pips as reward. And then I will take the trade. On the other hand, if I'm selling, I'm going to put my stop loss two levels above. So it will be very clear with the example that I'm going to present on trading view. Okay, now here's a chart on trading view. And we already have Okay, now we already have the market condition where we got, and this is AUD CAD, we are trading Australian dollar versus Canadian dollar, and we have a market condition where the bearish cross occurs here. So we have a bearish cross on the moving averages, and we have plotted EMA 10 and EMA 20. Okay, so here, I've just zoomed in. So that it's more clearer. Huh? 
this is the cross I'm talking about. Okay, so we got a bearish cross. So setup is bearish. Now, second condition I want to check is RSI should also cross below 50. Okay. So I'm zooming out again. So we have a bearish cross on the chart on the candlesticks and we will check the value of RSI. Now RSI has also dropped below 50. This is the middle line here. If it's not clear, I'm going to mark it. This is the middle line. This is RSI 50 value. And this line, which is flowing to the downside, this is RSI line. And RSI is also crossed below 50. Okay. So let's say the cross happened and then the cross of RSI happened. Means the EMA cross happened and then the cross of RSI happened. RSI crossed below 50 on this gap. So we will open our trade at the end of this candle, on the closure of this candle. So we are going to trade, we are going to sell here. I will mark this horizontal line as blue, as blue denotes my entry level, okay? And I'm going to keep my stop loss two levels above. Now, which two levels means I'm going to check my stop loss on the two highest levels, the peak. So I'm going to look for the peak. Now, how to look for the peak? The easiest way is turn your candles into a line chart. Okay, now this is the first peak and I'm going to look for the second peak. So I will place my stop loss on the peak, just above the peak, the highest one, the second highest. Okay, so I'm going to take another horizontal line and place it and I will make it red as red denotes the stop loss. I'm removing all the markings from the chart and I'm turning the line chart into candles again. So I've got my entry and I've got my stop loss. Now I want to calculate the risk and reward. So for that, I'll be using the tool, the short position tool. This blue line is my entry. I'll drag it to the stop loss line. So it will just measure the distance between the entry and the stop loss. And I'm going to drag it to get the risk and reward of 1.5. Yes. Now we have set our levels. We have the risk and reward. The tool is showing me if I'm going to risk 1%, here the risk and reward ratio is mentioned. So it shows me if I'm going to risk 1%, I'll be getting a reward of 1.5 because the green box, which is the reward area, it is bigger than the yellow box, which is the risk area. So I'm going to mark my target at the lower end of this tool. And this would be green as it will denote my target. So I've done my setup, I've set my entry, I've set my stop loss, I've checked the market conditions, and I've done I've also set up my target level. Now I'm just going to play and check if the market hits the stop loss or take profit. Now I've used the replay tool and the market is moving like a live market condition and it's going downwards. Now we have taken a sell trade on, uh, on the basis of the conditions and now we'll look for the target to be achieved. So if the candle they reach, yes, the candle they reached the green line. In fact, they closed below the green line. So our target is done. So this is how we can apply the technique, the strategy, the moving average cross over along with the cross of RSI 50, okay? For the buying conditions, we will just look for a bullish cross and the setup would be exactly opposite. All right, guys. So this was the trading strategy based on moving average 
and RSI. And in my next webinar, I'll be covering the next trading strategy, which will be based on MACD indicator, which is again our momentum indicator. Then we'll be using another indicator, uh, overlay indicator, a combination of momentum indicator, oscillator with a combination of overlay indicator, which is Bollinger Band, different ways to use a Bollinger Band and different components of MACD. So I'll be explaining the complete strategy of MACD with BB. Once again, I'm repeating, guys, if you want to open your new trading account, click the link given in the chat box. You'll be given $100 extra apart from the 100% bonus on your first deposit. And we have a second link here, which is given in the chat box for the IBs. IBs means introducing brokers. You can introduce business to GDC. You'll be rewarded with huge benefits. Special, special schemes are announced for the IBs. You can make a full-time career by bringing your friends and family and getting their account open at GDC. All right, guys. Thank you and take care. Bye-bye. See you in the next webinar.